occasionally people will ask me questions and one of the questions I commonly get is how do, how do I add texture to my illustrations? Today I want to go over one of the methods that I use. Uh, probably isn't one of the most simple methods, but, but it is something that I find useful, especially when working with purely vector illustrations. So, so this particular illustration was done in Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to open that right now so that we can take a look at that. Um, so here is the Illustrator version of that same illustration. Um, now as you can see, there's a lot of texture in here that is not something you can create with, uh, with vector. These are in fact, if I go up here to my links um, palette here, you can see these are bitmap images that have been embedded in the, in the document. Let me close that back up here. So each one of these little instances here of texture, these brush works, all of those, um, are something that I've created in, in Photoshop and then imported here into Illustrator. So the way that works, I'm going to copy one of these textures, place it out here so we can take a look at it. Okay. So if I look at this uh, bitmap here, the beauty of it is I can go ahead and change colors to whatever I want that to be and the background still remains transparent. Now if I turn off the color you can see how it actually looks. It's just black. Just 100 percent black or transparent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here now to Photoshop and show you how I made these. Um, not that specific uh, bitmap that we were looking at in there, but how, how these are created in general. So here's some brush work that I did in Photoshop just using some of the, the brushes that uh, come with Photoshop. Uh, drawn on a Cintiq tablet. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I, I'm going to sample some of this texture and turn it into a bitmap and then bring that into and to Illustrator to show you how that works. So to change this into a bitmap, I go image mode. First, you have to go grayscale. You'll see bitmap is, is grayed out because I'm in RGB. So if I change this to grayscale first, then yes, I want to merge and then discard the color information, indeed. And then we'll go up here and crop this thing. All right now, I can change that to a bitmap. Yes, we'll flatten layers. The layers need to be flattened. So there's a number of options here for this bitmap. First, I'm just going to go with the default, which is Diffusion Dither. And that's going to be the truest to what I already had. As you can see, there's just itty bitty little single pixel dots here that, um, that deal with these areas of, of value and, and transparency. Now I'm going to undo that and show you some of the other bitmap options that you have. So, yes, flatten the layers. This time I'm going to change it to, let's do 50% threshold. And what that's going to do is anything that's below 50% gray is going to be eliminated. Anything that's, that's above 50% is going to be taken all the way to 100% black. Bitmap can only be white or black. So let's go ahead and do that. Hit OK. And as you can see, that's going to be a little bit more choppy than the other version with the diffusion dither. Let's hit undo. Let's just go ahead and flatten this. Let's just do one more option here. Um, and you can see what some of these other ones do on your own. Um, pattern, pattern dither, for example, and custom pattern. But this I'm going to do half, half tone screen. This is one I used in that Adobe artwork, for example. I'm going to hit OK. And you'll have a number of options here. You can change the, the frequency of... So we have diamond, we have round, like little half tone dots. Um, ellipses, which as far as I can tell are about the same. I'm sure there's some difference. Line, square, and cross. Let's just keep it on diamond for now just to see how that looks. 
Uh, the frequency might be a little high. Let's try something like this. Angle I have at 45 degrees. You can really play around a lot with this. So as you can see, that gives it kind of a nice, chunky sort of, but, but with a little bit of regularity to it, almost as though it's canvas or something. So I'm going to go ahead and save this little guy here. And then I'm going to come back over to Illustrator and import it. Um, place, sorry. Okay. Try and find this guy in there. Looks like here it is. And there is my texture. Okay, so now you see how that works. Um, if it's not complicated enough, let's take a look at how I place these within the uh, illustration itself. As you can see, there's some nice crisp edges to these. So the way that works is I basically masked these textures into the shapes. So let's just kind of create a random shape here. And then I'm going to go up here and select both that shape. So this new shape is going to be my mask, and that needs to be on top. And then I'm going to grab the texture as well, and then go... Um, I always do this as a key command, so let me see if I can find this. <laughs> um, object, clipping mask, make. And there we go. And now using the direct select tool, I can grab that texture, move it around within that mask wherever I want it to be. Add a little bit more broken up areas or however I want that to be. So there's any number of textures you can create. You can use a gra you can use gradients. Um, you can use uh, the dissolve uh, brushes in in Photoshop. Uh, any textures that you can create in Photoshop, um, you can to a very large degree you can actually use those using this method in Illustrator as well. Hopefully this has been helpful to you. I realize this isn't an an entirely easy concept, but hopefully it makes sense and you can find ways to use this. Thanks again for watching.